So in today's video guys, we are going to cover a standard which is known as International Accounting Number 16 which deal with property, plant and equipment. So please make sure that you stay tuned, watch until the end of this part 1 so that when we go to part 2, 3, 4 and 5, you will be able to know where does this conclusion coming from, where does this principle coming from. Okay, so I did a short summary which is going to appear on the screen here. You can just go through it. However, I want to make important note about this standard. Okay, number one, what you have to know guys, this standard is dealing with property, plant and equipment. And when we talk about property, plant and equipment, you must be able to know whether is it treated under IS-16 or is it treated under IS-40? Why? We have a standard which is known as IS-40, which is investment property. Property. This is tangible assets, guys. We are talking about property that can be a building. Building can be classified in terms of IS-16 and can be classified in terms of IS-40. But in this video, we are going to cover IS-16. So you are going to know the principle that you should know that you will be able to identify that this building is IS-16. Okay, now for IS-40, you can go to playlist for accounting standard so that you can check how to treat IS-40 as well. Okay, what you have to know about IS-16 item, guys, is that property, plant, and equipment are measured at the lower cost. Are measured at the lower cost and are used for production purposes. are used for production purpose. Remember, investment property, guys, is used for investing purpose. So this one is for production purpose. Okay, now, uh, the point number one, they say recognition of property plan and equipment should be recognized when it's probable that the future economic benefit associated with the item and will flow to the entity and the cost of the item can be reliably measured so if you know the definition of an asset you can agree with me that this is the definition of an asset there must be in some economic benefit and there must be a future what a benefit so we are talking about what is 16 okay how do we measure is 16 item item uh, which are under is 16 are measured initially at cost to price so we are going to discuss what is going to form part of cost price because this is the first part guys and what you need to know about is 16 is that firstly before you calculate depreciation you must know how are you recognize your cost price okay the cost price guys contain a lot of things which we are going to lay down here which you need to know Okay, number one, obviously, is the purchase price. Purchase price. But this purchase price must exclude, must exclude value, guys. So, in other words, if you purchase something by 115,000, you must first subtract 15,000 of VAT and you left it with 100,000 and you call it purchase price. VAT are not included under cost price okay and the second one installation if you pay some installation cost you need to add it under a cost price if delivery has been made you need to do what to add a delivery cost as well okay because you can't just say you purchase a cell phone online by 500 but you paid export cost price of 500 you pay you thousand which means that this is also cost price okay because if you you didn't pay for delivery you were not going to get your cell phone okay then another one 
uh, we have a site preparation. If we are talking about plant, guys, you can't just go and put it in the bush. Obviously, some trucks may uh, need to come there and remove all those bushes so that you can have a clear uh, site. Site preparation is from part of a cost price. Otherwise, you can't put a plant in the bush. Okay. Professional fees. Okay, we have professional fees. And we also have this metling cost. Okay. And we also have handling cost. Okay, I can't explain all of them. There are so many guys. Okay, and the other one that you also need to know is employees training cost. Okay. I want to emphasize these two and also interest remember if you purchase through finance you have to pay what interest but do you have to include interest under cost price no it's not included this is finance cost and employees training cost is a no it does not form part of what a cost price because machine is still going to operate even though uh, these employees are not trained okay so in other words without this cost that are included this uh, item it was not going to work so all this item if you add them together they're going to give you a cost price very simple like that okay now the other thing that you need to know under introduction you are going to calculate depreciation guys when we talk about is 16 depreciation is very important so when we talk about depreciation depreciation it can be calculated by either straight line method or current value or diminishing you can call it dimin diminishing balance method or production method okay how does this method work number one straight line simply means that you calculate a depreciation using only a cost price uh, that you you got here only the cost price then you multiply by the percentage or you divide by number of year current value method you calculate using a current value cost minus accumulated depreciation is different uh, the difference between these two is that this one you need to subtract depreciation this one you use straight one there every year you calculate using the same cost production method uh, for example maybe we purchase a machine uh, that produce a loaf of bread and this machine has been estimated that it needs to, uh, to only produce 1 million bread. Which means that every time when we uh, produce a bread, we are going to, to subtract. If we, today we produce 10, the precision is 10. 20 is 20. And so on and so on until we complete the whole million. Okay? Then the other thing that you also need to know, uh, we can also choose, this is a cost model. It's a cost model. The other method that we are going to discuss under part two is the revaluation method. When using the revaluation method, an asset scaring amount can be regularly to ensure that the current amount does not differ material from fair value. In other words, when we use a revaluation method, guys, is because we're trying to compare it with what with fair value remember there is a difference between fair value and our current value okay or book value or book value okay there's a difference between these two these two is measured through minus in depreciation this one is measured fair value is measured through the current market how are the others selling outside okay so it's a revaluation 
method. But remember, when you evaluate, if you find that a fair value is higher than the book value, you still have to consider the lower one. If the fair value is lower, you consider the fair value. Why? Remember at the beginning I said are measured at the lower cost. In other words, we choose the lower one between these two. If we find that the fair value is too low, which means that we have to reduce it to, to fair value and the, the other different that we are going to get is not called depreciation under valuation method. It's called loss on fair value. Okay, <clears throat> so under IS-16, we don't recognize profit on fair value. Only under what? <clears throat> under IS-40, we can recognize profit on fair value. Okay, another thing, guys, uh, that I can emphasize is the issue of residual value. Residual value. When we talk about residual value, This is the value of an item at the end of its useful life. For example, we can purchase machine today by 500,000. And we said no. Our residual value in this uh, assets is 50,000. When we calculate depreciation, we must first subtract this 50,000. Because at the end of the useful life, we don't want our assets to left with zero. In other words, Every time when we calculate depreciation, we are putting 50,000 aside so that at the end of useful life, we can be able to sell it by, by 50,000. Very simple. Very simple. Okay. So I, this, I think for this part, uh, it's fine. But the other thing maybe, guys, uh, when we deal with property planting equipment, we are going to face a note. Uh, that uh, I'm going to draft here. This is the beginning. We're going to have a cost price and we're going to have less accumulated depreciation. Then we left with current value at the beginning. Okay. Then after that, we're going to have a movement number one we're gonna have additional then we're gonna have depreciation this is the note number three okay from the lower standard depreciation and we can have current value at disposal if you covered is 36 we can have impairment Impairment loss. Then after that, we're going to have our cost and accumulated depreciation and current value at the end. Okay. Then after that, we're going to have our different assets this side. We can have vehicle. Uh, we can also have building and other assets we can have okay we can have equipment just like that so this is what we are going to cover under our part two three and four when we do other kind of question paper thank you so much for watching guys please don't forget to like subscribe to this channel so that at least you will be part of the journey of 10,000 subscribers i hope i'm gonna see you on the next accounting standard goodbye guys